Um, we're going to hold a, um, a meeting about the human rights situation of lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and intersex persons in Belize. Um, this uh, hearing has been requested by the United Belize Advocacy Movement, um, and I would like, uh, I will uh, ask uh, uh, petitioners to introduce uh, themselves. Um, and uh, with the participation of the state of uh, Belize uh, as well. Uh, my name is uh, Felipe Gonzalez. I am the second, second vice president of the commission. Uh, with me is uh, Commissioner uh, James Cavallaro, um, who is the rapporteur of. Uh, no. It's, uh, it's Commissioner Ortiz, yes. And uh, unfortunately, the Commissioner Ortiz, due to health reasons, has not been able to come. She is the. The, the rapporteur for Belize, and uh, also with us is uh, Fanny Gomez, who is the uh, person of the staff uh, in charge of the um, rapporteurship on, on uh, LGTBI rights. Um, we're going to leave uh, the floor for, give the floor to the petitioners for 20 minutes, and then to a state for 20 minutes, and then we will have a, a, an exchange of uh, questions and commentaries. Yes. For 20 minutes. Okay. Um, so. Well, you can speak less, and you will have more time for answering. Uh, okay. Questions later. No problem. Good morning, and thank you, honorable commissioners. As we express, express our gratitude at the state's presence and the willingness to dialogue in this process. My name is Stephen Diaz, executive director of the Belize Youth Empowerment for Change, and I am joined by Mr. Orozco, executive director of Unibam in this process as the leading petitioner in this thematic hearing, sharing our concerns as proud Belizean activists. The United Belize Advocacy Movement is a non-governmental organization which uses a rights-based approach to reduce stigma and discrimination from men who have sex with men, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Belizeans. The Belize Youth Empowerment for Change also recognize the urgency of addressing punitive legislation that further marginalize young Belizean LGBT and also echoes the sentiments of the United Belize Advocacy Movement regarding intersecting issues of health, economics, education, and how discrimination impact quality of life. In this presentation, we're here to express our concerns in the following way. We remain concerned that the state remain retains legislation criminalizing same-sex sexual conduct, the provision exacerbates discrimination, violence against, and general marginalization of sexual minorities in Belizean society. We remain concerned that the state has not implemented any public policies or legislation that would rectify the extreme public stigma against LGBT individuals in Belizean society or counter the homophobic speech and misinformation spread by proponents of the criminalization of same-sex conduct. We remain concerned that the LGBT persons suffer from high levels of cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment, including a constant threat of violence from both state and non-state actors. We remain concerned that the Belize Immigration Act prohibits homosexuals, prohibits sexual minorities from entering the country. There, there is a systematic and widespread misconduct against LGBT persons by law enforcement officials, including arbitrary detention, blackmails and threats, cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment, and dangerous conditions in detention facilities. The state does not adequately prevent, investigate, or prosecute violence and killings because of because of the victim's sexual orientation, and LGBT individuals suffer from high rates of discrimination with society, including education, healthcare, and employment. We acknowledge operating freely as an organization without state interference and welcome the Prime Minister's statement in September 2013 that the state will not shirk its responsibility to all its citizens. The directive from the Cabinet for the development of a knowledge, attitude, and perception study, the PM commitment the PM commitment of not withdrawing the gender policy, which speaks to five pillars of the principle of respect for diversity. We are, however, concerned that the intersecting issues of discrimination, violence, hate crimes, remains insufficiently addressed in a national response in supporting human dignity and rights of LGBT citizens in any specific way. 
We welcome the state support for the recommendation which spoke to guaranteeing the right for everyone to equality before the law, equal protection of the law, and non-discrimination in conformity with the international commitments of the Universal Periodic Review. We note the lack of response from the state legislatively, which, whether, internationally, whether intentionally or in, unintentionally, helps to justify non-state actors <clears throat> and individual symbols of state perpetuate functional impunity against legislation, against LGBT um, issues, sorry. The willingness of state not to shirk its responsibility to all its citizens and its commitments to the principle of the newly approved gender policy as, is an impact. The first step, strengthening policy framework that is inclusive of LGBT citizens. But its reluctance to address universal periodic review recommendation affecting LGBT citizens in any substantive way. We remain cause for concern on how commitments to all layers of its human rights despite clear constitutional and international frameworks. We also note that with concern, in the last General Assembly of the State of Belize chose to add questionable footnote to the resolution, human rights, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression adopted in, the Guatemala, in Guatemala, failing to the commitments to protection of human rights of its LGBT citizens. Legislative invisibility. Legislative invisibility and institutional misunderstanding continues to be a cause for concern as the rights of LGBT citizens remain un unacknowledged in over three decades of independence. For example, the Immigration Act prohibits sexual minorities from entering the country. However, it required a legal challenge at the Caribbean Court of Justice for the state to respond to the concerns of discriminatory legislation. Still, it chose to defend the law then amended. We remain concerned that the state retains legislation criminalizing same-sex sexual conduct. Section 53 of the Criminal Code describes same-sex relation as an unnatural crime that makes it a criminal offense to have carnal intercourse against the order of nature with a penalty of 10 years in prison. Regardless of enforcement, the law has the effect of perpetuating discrimination and violence in Belize. For instance, in February of 2011, in the village of Esperanzo, Cario District, four police officers pulled up beside a car that two gay men were driving. The officers kicked the door of the car, insulted the men, and demanded that they pay 200 to the police officers to be arrested. The state has not conducted any way in any way, comprehensive review of discriminatory laws on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity, which discriminates against its LGBT citizens, nor strengthens its mechanism in data collection, research, or rights enforcement to inform or give life to the protection of rights or the advancement of policies. We remain concerned that the state has not implemented any public policy or legislation that would rectify the extreme public stigma against LGBT individuals in the society, or to counter the incitation of hate and misinformation spread by proponents of criminalization of same-sex conduct. The concern is reinforced because there is a broadcasting authority that, ha use, that is used to regulate local media, but it exists without a budget or staff, despite current regulations. The concerns about perceived stigma found in a 2012 study report found that 40% had suffered some level of discrimination, whether verbal or physical. Uh, both being the more common forms. Concerns about violence is interconnected to hate speech that is further perpetuated in parts of Belize, in the parts of Belize media. In a column written by the editor 17 November 2011 in the Amandala, it spoke to, and I quote, I've got news for those homo, these homos. I won't budget a millimeter for my stand against them. They can call me anything they like. Theirs will still be a nasty, despicable, God-forbidden way of life until the heavens crumble and even afterward. An individual wrote me a very short note in support of my previous article, and his remarks against homosexual was, and I quote, that even dogs do this. Furthermore, a Mandela media coverage of Orozco versus Attorney General case, which refers to the current constitution challenge of Lee Sodom law, reveals comments of heat that goes unabated, supported by the absence of legislative protection addressing incitation to hatred. Many of the comments posted in the article against Section 53 can be noted from dates 29 November and 8 December 2011, and one particular comment comes to mind. Pack them up, and I quote, and the rest of the nasty people and drop them out as, as, 
out to sea past the reef and let the sharks eat their bodies parts that they don't use know how to use. We remain concerned that the LGBT person suffers high level of cruel and humane and degrading treatment, including a constant threat of violence from both state and non-state actors. For example, in 2014, a transgender individual was walking in the village of San Jose in the Orange Rock district of Belize when a group of young men began to throw bottles at her. She reported the assault to the local police who laughed her at her and failed to make the take the incident seriously. In another case, a transgender individual in the village of Guinea Grass or in Dwak district was raped by a man she knew. She did not report the assault to her local police or tell her family out of fear of disgracing herself and her family. There is systematic and widespread misconduct against LGBT persons by law enforcement officials, including arbitrary detention, blackmail, and threats, cruel and inhumane and degrading treatment and dangerous conditions in detention facilities. For instance, on the evening of April 30, 2011, two police officers detained two transgender persons at the bar. Immediately about, upon entering the bar, one of the officers directed derogatory questions towards these individuals, such as, and I quote, are you girls? And I quote, why are you dressing like that if you are a man? The police officers physically detained them and when asked for reasons, answered, because you look suspicious, you confuse me. During the car ride to the prison, the transgender individual was subjected to offenses, of hum offenses and humiliating language from the officers, which continued upon arrival at the police station, with one police officer insinuating that these individuals should be murdered and dumped on, the, on a neighbor highway. Other prison inmates threatened sexual violence against the detainees, and one was forced to expose herself. They were released the next morning with no charges brought against them, and they have not filed out of fear of Reprisals. The state then does not adequately prevent, investigate, or prosecute violence or killings because of a victim based on sexual orientation. On, for instance, uh, uh, February 13, 2009, 44 year old Enrique Castillo was found dead inside his home on Belize Corozal Road in Orange Walk Town. He had been beaten to death with a baseball bat and his throat was caught in, with a ni kitchen knife. In October 2012, the person charged was acquitted of murder because he reported to the court that his confession was forced. LGBT individual suffers from high rates of discrimination within society, including education, health care, and employment. On October 1st and 5th of 2009, a 19-year-old transgender student, Jose Garcia, was formally threatened on multiple occasions with dismissal from the Bible Palm Baptist School of Adult Continuing Education because, according to the school, he, and I quote, acts like a girl, and quote, dresses effeminately, and quote, uses the female bathroom. LGBTI human rights defenders operate in an environment where a hanging effigy man with the label on the bomb led a march of over 3,000 persons in the southern part of the country. There was no legislative protection but a reliance on the Ministry of Forestry, Fisheries, Sustainable Development and Indigenous People in July of 2013, in which she can be quoted in the Channel 5 News article as saying, and I quote, furthermore, the hanging of a figurine representing members of UNIBAM, says Alamia, perpetuates a hate crime. L LGBT person suffers from high level of cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment treatment, including a constant threat of violence from both state and non-state actors. For example, LGBT individuals and police are also frequently the victims of sexual assault and rape. In 2010, a transgender woman in Guinea Grass in the Orange Walk district was raped by an inebriated man wielding a machete. Again, she chose not to report the incident out of fear and shame. The, violent, the violation referred to above are both exasperated by the absence of systematic reporting of rec or recording, the failure to provide concrete disaggregated statistics in regards to violence and discrimination against LGBT individuals permit Belizean authorities to ignore and often re misrepresent homophobic and transphobic abuse. When hate crime occurs, there is no obligation for law enforcement representatives of the state to to report the crime bias motivation. It is generally recorded as murder, robbery, assault, harm, or harassment. The murder of Joseph Sanchez in January 2014 is an example of this concern. To contextualize the concern, police suffers from high rates of violence. As per capita, homicide rate was 41.4 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants, the sixth highest rate in the world in 2011. Between 2000 and 2011, homicide rates in Belize rose at least 5% during every year except one. In 2013, it dropped to a below 100 murders for the first time.
One study found that the conviction rate for Belize in Belize was less than 10%. This is important when you consider formal reports against police misconduct was, was t the total was 238 formal complaints. Of that, 39% were for police brutality, 18 were for harassment, and 70 was for the power of abuse. Within the context of general, general violence and lack of accountability, vulnerable groups within Belize in society, particularly LGBT individuals, are subject to particularly high levels of violence that compound the problems of impunity and distrust. Complicating the effort to reduce distrust, stigma, and discrimination, and improve public human rights knowledge is an internal memo dated March 3, 2014 from the Catholic Bishop written to school managers and principals, which blacklisted four organizations making presentation in their school, including UNUBAM and the government-owned National AIDS Commission. UNUBAM is the only LGBT organization that exists in the country of Belize. Let us state, and I quote, Today I write as, a, as your bishop to remind you that organizations whose activities and position are actively opposed to the moral teaching of the Catholic Church, or which endanger the soul of the people of Belize, cannot be welcome under any circumstance in our schools. The letter continue. This agenda of sodomy, abortion, and sexual gender redefinition is seeking to radically change Belize's Christian character. We beg to um, define what Christian character is. This is important to note as a bar to cultivating an environment of tolerance and respect for human rights. The state remains lacking in its response to the backlisting of the organization, despite potential impact of millions invested in health that support the health rights of all citizens. Human rights defense of LGBTI in Belize remained challenged in 2014, as so-called constitutional marches against gender policy, the United Belize Advocacy Movement, and the Church's opposition in the Orozco versus Attorney General case to Section 53 have triggered the threats and injury that have led to an inquiry from the UN Special Rapporteur on the promotion and protection of the human rights and freedom of opinion and expression, and on the situation of human rights defenders in a letter dated 29 February 2012, as well as precautionary measures issued by this commission on the 2nd July 2013. To date, there has been no communication from the state regarding its response. Nevertheless, the state must be congratulated in its steadfast public position of not withdrawing the gender policy of its willingness to seek technical capacity to, to conduct research in understanding the public view of LGBT human rights through a recent cabinet directive, along with its openness to engage community in the universal, pur universal periodic review of 2013 and follow up to the pu periodic review before the UN Human Rights Committee in 2014. We offer, an opportunity, we offer an opportunity for the state to reflect on the following recommendations. Assess how the investments in, cruel, in current hum, human rights mechanism and agenda addresses right enforcement and protection concerns of its LGBT citizens. Consider practical mechanisms to address discrimination to seek technical support, expand its capacity to respond to discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Consider setting timelines and budgetary allocation in place to address discriminatory practices. Consider reforming the Immigration Act to take homosexuals off the list of prohibited persons, particularly those individuals seeking asylum or refugee status. Adopt criminal legislation <clears throat> that imposes proportional criminal sentences for violent hate crimes committed because of the real or perceived sexual orientation or gender identity of the victims and ensure that hate crimes are investigated, prosecuted, and where applicable, punished. Provide equality and human rights sensitization training, particularly in the area of LGBT, right, LGBT rights for teachers and staff in school, government officials at all levels, and in particular, law enforcement officers. And act and enforce dip disciplinary penalties for law enforcement and immigration officials that engage in arbitrary detention, harassment, and black blackmail of sexual minorities. Adopt stringent investigatory mechanism to address crimes committed against sexual minorities and document complaints and crimes committed against LGBT persons in police annual report. And act legislation prohibiting discrimination that is inclusive of sexual orientation and gender identity in all its realm, including employment, housing, education, and access to health services. Engage in public education campaigns regarding health rights, correcting widespread misinformation regarding sexual minorities. Condemn hate speech generally and specifically against LGBT persons in institutions, civil and criminal 
Pops institution civil and criminal penalties for engaging in hate speech that incites violence against LGBT persons, implement the deliberation of the resolution 2807 adopted in 2013 at the General Assembly of the OAS in Guatemala, and to sign and ratify the Inter-American Convention Against All Forms of Discrimination and Intolerance. We're thankful for this opportunity to share the reality of many Belizean LGBT who are not able to vocalize their experiences. Once again, I recognize the chairperson and collaborators of this event and, and, and um, supporting our presentation, we have provided support materials to further substantiate their cause. Thank you. I thank the, the presentation made by the petitioners and uh, now I give the floor to the uh, State of Belize for 20 minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, President Gonzalez and I'm Commissioner Caballero, I want to greet my fellow Belizeans, um, young advocates. Um, the government of Belize appreciates the opportunity to present its views on the issues that have been raised. Uh, the government of Belize is the party that is foremost interested in ensuring that all the human rights for all the Belizeans are protected. Um, I will now proceed, uh, Mr. President, to read uh, submission that came to us from the Solicitor General's office. Um, I apologize that we did not send it to you earlier as was requested, but um, we just received it as I was driving in this morning. Uh, we will make sure that you get a copy of it at the conclusion of the proceedings. Um, Belize is a constitutional democracy in which the Constitution is the supreme law and it is a sovereign and democratic state of Central America in the Caribbean region. It is a state that respects the fundamental rights of all Belizean nationals. This general principle was buttressed by the Honorable Prime Minister of Belize when he delivered his 2013 Independence Day speech and declared, I open quotes, <clears throat> Recently, however, a most unsettling phenomenon has arisen. A version of the culture wars has come to our country and it is souring the harmony and disrupting the rhythm of Belizean life. The golden knot that ties us all together is in danger of coming loose. Now I do not wish to give offense to anyone on Independence Day. So what I say next is spoken not in anger or even in sorrow, but merely by way of exhortation. The diversity that we have hymned for so long must not now prove to be an empty trope, so much PR fluff. It must pass this latest test. In particular, we cannot afford for government and the churches to be at odds. The filigreed chain that links the two is a proud part of the national ornamentation and it cannot be allowed to break. Government will therefore fully respect the right of the churches to propagate their understanding of the morality or immorality of homosexuality. But what government cannot do is to shirk its duty to ensure that all citizens, without exception, enjoy the full protection of the laws. After all, the Belize Constitution that affirms the supremacy of God also affirms fundamental rights and the dignity of the individual human being. That same Constitution further declares that all persons are equal before the law and entitled to non-discrimination, to freedom from interference with their privacy, and to freedom from unlawful attacks on their honor and reputation. There is, I submit, no logical inconsistency between these different tenets of our Constitution, and government, the churches, and the Belizean polity must find a way to uphold all the principles of our foundation document. This excerpt comes from a speech by the Prime Minister of Belize on Independence Day, September 2013. However, it must be noted in this context that an advanced question regarding a section of the Criminal Code of Belize, which criminalizes sodomy, is now sub judice, and we are compelled to respectfully refrain from speculating on the outcome of the case. In our legal and constitutional ethos, there is respect for the separation of powers and the organs of state. 
the pending Unibam litigation is before the Supreme Court of Belize and that ought to be respected by all parties until the proceedings are concluded. The decision of the court is still pending and the fundamental aspect of the case addressed the, the issue of equality before the law, discrimination, and whether the Constitution of Belize includes a person's sexual orientation. We ask most respectfully that this process be respected. Further, the government's commitment to an inclusive society was further strengthened when the United Nations resident representative to Belize was written seeking assistance to engage a consultant to address and implement a, and I open quotes, sensitization and educational campaign, inclusive of scientific polling components, to measure the Belizean public's attitude on gender issues and anti-gay perceptions. It is believed that this report, once conducted, would greatly assist Belize. I also want at this point to, to thank uh, my fellow Belizeans um, for recognizing these efforts uh, in their earlier presentation. Belize is a democracy in which the will of the people has to be respected. The government of Belize has not encountered what is referred to as hate speech and under section 12 of the constitution of Belize, persons have a right to freedom of, ex of expression. Section 12 provides, open quotes, except with his own consent, a person shall not be hindered in the enjoyment of his freedom of expression, including freedom to hold opinions without interference, freedom to receive ideas and information without interference, freedom to communicate ideas and information without interference, whether the communication to the public generally or to any person or class of persons, and freedom from interference with his correspondence. In the same section 12, Article 2, nothing contained in or done under the authority of any law shall be held to be inconsistent with or in contravention of this section to the extent that the law in question makes reasonable provision for A, that is, that is required in the interests of defense, public safety, public order, public morality, or public health. B, that is required for the purpose of protecting the reputations, freedoms, rights of other persons or the private lives of persons concerned in legal proceedings, preventing the disclosure of information received in confidence, maintaining the authority and independence of the courts, or regulating the administration or the technical operation of telephone, telegraphy, posts, wireless broadcasting, television, or other means of communication, public exhibitions or public entertainments, or C, that imposes restrictions on officers in the public service that are required for the proper performance of their functions. The government of Belize is fully cognizant that the freedom does allow you to anything you want to say, whenever you want to say it, and in whatever manner. It is worthy to note that if any hate speech is being propagated, I'm sorry, prorogated on television or radio, that the Broadcasting Authority established under Broadcasting and Television Act, Chapter 227 of the Laws of Belize, can address those issues. And if it is found and established, the authority can suspend and revoke licenses that were issued. Mr. Orozco made two reports to the Belize Police Department in respect of two separate incidents that occurred. On the 9th of January 2012, a report was made to the Raccoon Street Police Station, Eastern Division, Belize City, Belize, where it was alleged that around 4.25 p.m., whilst Mr. Orozco was walking along George Street, Belize City, heading to West Canal, to West Collett Canal Street, he was accosted by two dark-complexioned males, and the male persons threw a beer bottle at him, causing injuries to his mouth. Mr. Orozco sustained bruises, and his upper and lower teeth were broken. The Belize Police Department commenced investigations, which are still ongoing. The second reported incident allegedly occurred between the hours of 8 p.m. on the 8th of May 2013 and 8.30 a.m. on the 9th of May 2013, where there was an attempt to break into a red Kia Sportage four-door SUV motor vehicle bearing license plate LPC-2 
8585. The estimated damage was in the vicinity of 850 Belize dollars. The matter was reported and an, and an investigation continues. But the police have not had much success because of the unavailability of critical evidence to address the reports. For example, lack of eyewitnesses. The Belize Police Department remains committed to solving crimes and making Belize safe for all its citizens. The Belize Police Department has retained the services of a trained attorney at law and she heads the prosecution branch. The department, with the aid of the attorney at law, has conducted general human rights training and importantly, training with investigators to build their capacity. The Office of the Solicitor General works with the police department in also conducting training to further build capacity with the department that will inure to the benefit of the public. The murder of Joseph Sanchez is still actively under investigation and the police department is actively perusing some credible leads but there is no determination by the investigators that the crime was a hate crime. The investigation is a general homicide investigation and it is headed by very senior investigators in the police department. The government of Belize remains committed to protecting the fundamental human rights of all its citizens. Um, at the conclusion of, of these proceedings, um, and now that we have the, the new version of the submission uh, made uh, by the petitioners, um, we will uh, proceed to address some of the issues that have been addressed in, in, in a further correspondence uh, to the Commission. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to express our views on this matter. Um, I want to again thank the petitioners for recognizing that the efforts uh, that are underway in Belize uh, really are, are an ongoing process and that all of us are interested in ensuring that the human rights of all Belizeans are protected. It is a work in progress and we thank them for their presence. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Ambassador Menders, for, for your presentation on behalf of the uh, government of Belize. Uh, I now give the floor to Commissioner Cavallaro. Uh, many thanks, <coughs> uh, Commissioner uh, Gonzalez. I would like to thank the petitioners uh, for the presentation today. I would also very much like to thank uh, the representatives of the state of Belize, Mr. Ambassador, Ms. Representative, uh, for the commission, it's very important uh, to be able to, to hold this type of hearing, uh, to receive information, and also to uh, promote greater dialogue on this issue uh, and on other issues uh, of human rights uh, in, in Belize. And we very much hope that this is a process that will uh, continue and intensify, uh, and the commission very much uh, is interested in providing its assistance as it can in this matter and in other matters. So this is uh, a very important hearing for us. Uh, first, if I, if I may begin uh, by recognizing, as uh, both parties have, uh, the importance uh, of the comments of the Prime Minister on Independence Day, uh, the, the, the spirit uh, in which those comments were made, and the values, uh, the core values, uh, defended. Uh, that's very important for us at the Commission. I think it's very important for Belizeans uh, and as well throughout the Caribbean and, and uh, region and, and in the Americas. Uh, so we certainly <coughs> celebrate those comments as, as you have and hope that it uh, is indicative of perhaps some concrete uh, efforts moving forward. And, and there I'd like to direct a few questions at specific issues. One is, as um, I'm sure you're aware, uh, the petitioner, Caleb Orozco, is the beneficiary of precautionary measures issued in, in May of last year. Uh, we are not aware at the Commission of specific uh, concrete steps taken by uh, the government of Belize, but we would welcome information in that regard. And we would also uh, welcome uh, further conversations and discussions taking advantage of the presence of uh, the representatives of the state and uh, Caleb Orozco here uh, to see if there, it might not be possible to, to work through and, and uh, think about and uh, implement specific concrete measures that would ensure uh, the safety of, 
Kalaborosko and the, and the institution uh, for, uh, for which he works. A, a few other uh, quicker questions, and let me say that it might not be possible in the time we have to respond to all of them, and we would welcome submission in writing from both parties with regard to these issues. Uh, there were a series of specific incidents. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, you spoke to some of them, including a, a recent uh, murder uh, of Mr. Sanchez, which is clearly a cause for concern, but there were others uh, other that were mentioned. Uh, we would very much appreciate any comments about investigations uh, from the state. Uh, I understand that the issue of the criminalization of sodomy is before the Belizean courts, and I certainly understand and appreciate the position of the state in recognizing the independence of the judiciary. That said, I don't know uh, if it's still possible for the executive branch to engage for the Solicitor General or the, or the functional equivalent uh, to have a position. I was wondering what the position of the executive branch of the Belizean government has been in, in, in that litigation. Uh, and I understand certainly that you cannot uh, at this stage instruct or uh, in any way influence the, the judiciary, but uh, what is the position of the executive branch uh, in that litigation and whether that's subject to change? Uh, a few more questions. The Immigration Act and its preclusion of particular individuals based on sexual orientation, what possibility is there of a change in that law? Uh, I would ask the same of the implementation of the Universal Periodic Review recommendations, if that's an issue under the consideration of the state. And finally, uh, in the inter-American system, uh, whether there's a possibility, particularly in light of the, of the comments of the Prime Minister in September, after the June 2013 General Assembly meeting and resolution, if there's a possibility of a change in the position of the state of Belize with regard to a resolution, uh, if it is indeed proposed again in 2014 regarding the rights of LGBTI persons. So uh, there's a number of questions and they affect both parties and, and thank you very much again. Anything you're not able to address in the time we have, we would very much welcome a receipt in writing. Thank you. Attorney Fanny Gomez from the Rapporteurship on LGBTI Rights. Sure. The Executive Secretary, Emilio Alvarez y Casa. Gracias. Thank you very much. Good morning, both parties to the President's Ambassador. Thank you very much. Coming from a national, which is, is your neighbor, I'm, I'm very glad to have you here. Thank you very much for your presence. Uh, uh, I just want to remark the idea, not for this precise time, that the reporter is working in a report across the Americas, and it will be very useful for us to receive the Belize's information. Uh, the, the questionnaire that we already sent, it is quite important for us, as not only this matter in all matters, we, we are using those information as uh, processing data. So uh, if the state is able to send us the information about this uh, matter, the, the reporter is working on that. If you are in conditions, we can talk later on. But I just want to insist how much important it is for us to receive the information coming from the state regarding the specific issues about LGTB. Uh, there is a whole uh, report on process, and the information coming from Belize is quite important. Thank you very much. Attorney Fanny Gomez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to thank both parties for the information provided. I just had a couple of questions, one for the state and one for the petitioners. Um, the, the, well, first, I, w I want to also join uh, Commissioner Cavallaro in uh, acknowledging the statement ba made by Prime Minister of Belize. He was also subject by a press release issued by the Commission last year in which the Commission acknowledged such a uh, statement and encouraged the state to continue moving towards that direction and translate that into concrete um, action. Um, and so my question would be, um, the petitioners presented information on specific acts of violence um, by private agents, but also by state law enforcement agents. Um, so my question uh, to the state was whether it can, you know, in addition to the information it provided on, on investigations of certain cases, if it can also provide 
information on specific state policies that could uh, be aimed at preventing more broadly these situations from occurring, especially when they're committed by law, law enforcement agents. So not only uh, acts of violence, but also acts of discrimination. And in addition to that, um, this situation uh, obstacles uh, in place to, uh, obstacles are presented when persons try to denounce these acts of violation. It's very important for us. And so, and then the petitioners, a quick question. In your recommendations, you mentioned certain actions in terms of education and employment. Um, but I missed, uh, and perhaps you can provide a little bit more of information on specific, uh, and if you don't have it now, you can forward it later. Uh, uh, documented cases of discrimination in employment. Uh, either accessing employment or during employment, um, and uh, also if you have specific information of acts of violence in schools or against youth in general, it will be very, very useful for us. Thank you. Well, I would like to start by saying that uh, the Commission appreciates the constructive spirit of uh, both the petitioners and the state at this uh, hearing. Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize some points that have already been mentioned here and at some some more something more uh, first I would like to stress the importance that the Commission assigns to the uh, work of the uh, human rights defenders and in this regard uh, it is uh, very significant very important for the Commission uh, to make sure that the precautionary measure that uh, adopted the uh, for the protection of, of Mr. Orozco is uh, fully implemented. Um, the Commission understands that uh, the role of public uh, of uh, human rights defenders is uh, uh, indispensable for the protection of rights, and in fact, is uh, if anything happens to a human rights defender, that will have a much broader impact on on the rights of other persons. So, I would like also. Uh, updated information on, on this matter to make sure that the measure adopted by the Commission is uh, fully implemented. Um, concerning the, the issue of uh, decriminalization of sodomy, um, well, this is a, while this is a, a, a thematic hearing um, and not uh, focused on a, on a specific case, um, and also that the Commission is not the role for the Commission um, to determine the constitutionality or unconstitutionality of, uh, of uh, domestic norms. Um, it is a matter that uh, the Commission uh, consider very important in terms of uh, evaluating the um, protection of uh, LGTBI persons uh, in any country. Um, so the Commission will uh, follow up the, the decision taken at the local level and eventually the Commission might issue a statement on this matter uh, considering uh, international standards. So, uh, and the Commission expects that uh, the, this uh, situation uh, will be addressed at the local level, um, taking into account those uh, international standards as a way uh, to uh, fully uh, provide a full solution of this matter. Um, also, as uh, the Commission's uh, rapporteur on migrants, I would like to go back to the issue of uh, immigrants uh, who are LGTBI and um, that uh, uh, those uh, that the rights of those persons uh, should be uh, fully uh, enforced as well. Um, I'm going to give now the floor for five minutes to the petitioners, and now five, and then five minutes to the state. Um, morning, Ambassador. Um, I'm quite happy that you mentioned the um, ongoing investigation regarding um, the, the two viol um, experiences of crime I had personally. But would you be able to say whether there's a statute of limitation regarding the first case where um, I had lost two of my teeth after the um, bear bottle incident. Um, that would be most helpful in 
determining whether um, it's possible to um, that that first issue um, w would be addressed. That's important. Um, on the issue regarding cabinet directive um, around finding out more regarding about the public perception on LGBTI issues. Um, is there any further discussion? My question is, is there any further discussion around um, timelines for getting that research done or any discussion around doing uh, an assessment and around discriminatory laws to better understand what, what the issue is and how government can respond? I think those are two important things in 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 really helping the government to respond in a healthy and substantive way. I'll give the floor to the state for five minutes. Uh, thank you. Um, I do not think I am able to address substantively several of the questions that have been posed because I do not have the information uh, at this time. But a couple of them um, are pretty easy to to deal with. Um, on the matter of um, of talking um, to Mr. Caleb about about his safety, we were talking before we entered the room, and certainly we'll keep talking after we leave the room. I don't know specifically uh, what happened uh, from the security agency point of view after the precautionary measures uh, were were issued, uh, but it is certainly something that we can acquire and we will get, be getting back to the Commission. Uh, we will try as much as possible uh, to answer the questions uh, that have been posed, um, uh, particularly the cases, the specific cases that, that, that were detailed. Uh, we will ask that our authorities provide a status on each one of them. Is it concluded? Is it still being investigated? Has it gone to court? What has happened? We'll ask for a status on each one of the cases that were articulated, and we will make sure the commission um, gets it. Uh, with regards to the to the recommendations of the periodic review, I, I did mention that now the government of Belize has requested the assistance uh, to do this study on public opinion. Uh, it is part of an ongoing process to address the recommendations that were put to us um, as part of the periodic review, and we're moving in that direction. Um, with regards to the uh, state policies for, the prevent for ensuring the rise of LGBT migrants, um, I'm afraid that, that um, I don't have that information. I don't know if there, I, I doubt that there are any particular uh, uh, legislative provisions for that specific group of people. Uh, migrants that come to Belize enjoy all the protections offered by law to every individual. Um, so all the, the protections offered, uh, enjoyed by, by the Belizeans in Belize are enjoyed by the visitors who visit our country. Um, I don't know, I don't think that we have any particular provisions for, for LGBT migrants. Um, well, on, on, on the beer bottle uh, case that was asked by Mr. Orozco, we, we will look into it if, if there are any statute of limitations um, implications for that. Uh, on the matter of any timelines for the conducting of this study and follow up on that, we will also be asking what is, what is the status. On the, the, on the matter of state policies for the prevention of violations and discrimination by state agents, the law of Belize does make provision uh, for, for what are the steps to be followed when uh, the, either the police or other security agents uh, make these kinds of transgressions. There is a, a mechanism where these incidents can be reported to internal affairs and investigations are conducted. If you want uh, copies of the specific provisions of law, we can also make sure that those are brought um, 
to the attention of the Commission. Um, we will appreciate if um, we, I was trying to write down as, as, as the questions were being asked, what were the specific issues that were being requested so that we can ensure that, that we provide the information that is asked. I'm not sure if I was successful doing it, but perhaps we can follow up with the Commission to see if we can get a transcript of those specific questions so that we can make sure that we respond to the specific questions that were posed and, and follow up with the information. Um, I also want to conclude by saying that this is an ongoing process. Uh, in Belize, we are serious about protecting the human rights of people. Um, I think everybody recognizes that many times uh, it is not a matter of the political will or it's not a matter of the law. Sometimes it really is a matter of resources and being able to do everything that you really would like to do, especially in areas of like education, the provision of health services. So um, sometimes, as in the case of Belize, it's not really a matter of, of law or, or political will. It, it has a lot to do with resources. Um, it's not unsurmountable. And as we develop our country, as we build a better Belize, we also want to ensure that all Belizeans enjoy all the rights that are offered to them by the law. So thank you. We will uh, do our best to respond to all the issues that have been raised. And again, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, I, I would like to go back to the issue of, uh, you know, talk about that we have a few additional minutes of the issue of uh, migrants, uh, because the uh, petitioners uh, stated that the, there is a, a provision banning uh, those uh, migrants who belong to the LGBTI community, and uh, Attorney Gomez confirms me that. So that would be a, a, an issue that uh, for the reportership on migrants and uh, the Commission would be important to be addressed by the government. And I, I also wanted to, to ask if, uh, concerning the precautionary measure in favor of uh, Mr. Orozco, there was no uh, police protection included in the, in the measure? Because nobody has mentioned that here. And uh, then I give you the floor, uh, Commissioner Cavallero. <coughs> One last point. Uh, Certainly we understand that the Belizean state has many bodies which must work in a coordinated fashion. Uh, one issue that uh, would be helpful if, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you might be able to speak to is a, a, a pending General Assembly resolution uh, if there might be a change in the position of the state of Belize. It's symbolic, but it's also uh, important in the message that it sends, not just to Belizeans, but throughout the Caribbean and throughout uh, the Americas. So those would be the questions in the last few minutes that we have. I, I, I guess, uh, Mr. President, you would... Yeah, you have the, the floor for two minutes. So. My apologies. Um, I realize that the question was asked regarding education and employment documentation. At this point, we don't have it on hand, but we can certainly get the specific cases to you um, in a few days. Um, in regards to the precautionary measures process, um, there is some confusion as to really what happened in terms of the communication process through the police department. Um, uh, on the issues around uh, migration and LGBTI, um, we're still struggling with documenting what's going on. And part of the problem with the whole documentation process is there's a there's a problem within within the state system, and that is for people who who perceive they don't have no legislative protection, um, it's difficult for them to trust that the law enforcement officers will uphold or take their report seriously. So. Um, I believe the state will have a challenge to to also find significant amount of data because whatever data is collected, it's not disaggregated historically, and and, and so because there's not a systematic approach to data collection, for example, um, whatever the state has would be um, limited. What we have can um, can be treated as insight or informal view of the concerns that we receive, but unfortunately, um, because it, the process is ongoing, there's a lot of work which needs to be done beyond this discussion at the moment. 
thanks. I give the floor again for the to the state. Um, thank you. On 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 the matter of the the immigration um, immigration law, it, it it is part of of the laws of Belize. Um, I don't know if there is is any at the moment um, initiative to address it. Um, I I really would 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 not want to venture. Uh, to say anything about that because I really don't have the information. Um, on on the, um, there was another question posed by Mr. Cavallaro, if you would about the mind. General Assembly resolution. Yes. If, uh, uh, the the General Assembly resolution. If you look at the footnote by Belize, it said that the government of Belize uh, was footnoting the resolution because the issues being dealt with in that resolution were the matter of the case that is still before the courts, and therefore. Uh, the government of Belize is not in a position to take uh, political, international positions on these issues uh, when we don't know what will be the outcome of the proceedings. Once the, 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 the proceedings are concluded, uh, we will be in, in a better position. Uh, we really wouldn't want to venture in any direction until we have heard from the courts. Well, I would like to thank again to the petitioners and the state for the, their participation at this hearing, and the Commission will continue to engage in a dialogue with uh, both parties on this matter in Belize. Thanks.